Hi guys, welcome to 13 Universal. And um, with me, we're going to be solving A level CIA biology. This is schedule. Okay, so we're going to be looking at nucleic acids and protein synthesis series 2. So don't forget that um, we have done series 1. Check our videos. You will find a lot of other series we've done and they will actually enlighten you. You learn a lot. So let's come with me with your writing pad and pen. Let's solve some questions. All right. So the first question says the diagram shows part of a DNA molecule. How many hydrogen bonds are involved in holding these strands of DNA together? Okay. So how many hydrogen bonds? Pause the video and then try it. How many hydrogen bonds? Now, if you check here, you see that this is um, adenine, thymine, guanine, so, so, so this is complementary base pair. So the question is how many hydrogen bonds are formed between this, this, and that, and then we'll count it. Just, just don't forget that, all right, two hydrogen bonds are formed between adenine and guanine, that's two. Three hydrogen bonds are formed between guanine and cytosine, okay? Three hydrogen bond, cytosine and guanine. Three hydrogen bond here also. So you just count. Help me count how many. This is two, two plus three, five. Five plus three, eight. Eight plus three is eleven. So that's eight. Okay. Now let's go to the next question, guys. Which statement describes a process that occurs during protein synthesis? Yeah, which one? Please remember. This is from 13 Universal. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you, you know, um, like our videos, share our videos, and of course, comment. All right, look at this. Which statement describes process that occurs during protein synthesis? Now, protein synthesis um, is made up of two major um, events. So. So we expected if you, if you mention the word protein synthesis, where is it? Protein synthesis. Now, yeah. So protein synthesis is equal to two major events. One is called transcription. All right. So I, we expected that um, in this in the options there, either um, the correct answer will either major on transcription. So all right. So either transcription or the second one right so the second one is because second event is translation translation okay translation good so let's dive into the options so the one that describes transcription or translation is the answer transcription is the linking together of tRNA molecule and the specific amino acid that's not correct transcription is actually linking together of RNA nucleotides to form a messenger messenger RNA so this is eliminated B says transcription is the linking together of free DNA nucleotide this would have been correct but transcription is the linking of free RNA not DNA nucleotide you know the difference between DNA nucleotide and RNA nucleotide tell me two differences between DNA nucleotide and RNA nucleotide yeah, of course, there are differences. DNA nucleotide contains deoxyribose pentose sugar and it contains thymine. RNA nucleotide contains ribose sugar, not deoxyribose, and it contains uracil, among other bases. Okay, so this is why B is eliminated. C is a translation is a linking together of amino acid. Now, this is a translation now, linking together of amino acid coded for by messenger RNA. Now, this is correct. So, in translation, at ribosome, messenger RNA, um, sorry, uh, amino acids are linked up, okay? But messenger RNA is acting as a template, all right? So this acts as a template, that determines amino acid, the sequence of amino acids, so this is correct. Now, this is a translation of the synthesis of messenger RNA molecule. No, this is transcription, transcription of the synthesis of messenger RNA molecule, okay? All right, so the answer is C, okay? So let's go to the next question. During semi-conceptual replication of DNA in eukaryotic cells, the following process occur. Good, these are process. Which rule, which shows the correct order of some of the processes? 
So I'd like you to try this. Okay. So don't forget that during transcript during DNA replication, which occurs in S phase of um, interphase, you have something like this. Um, this is DNA. You remember, DNA is double helix. You remember, double helix. Very helical. Very helical. Remember, I'm not. I'm not going to describe the entire. Sorry, um, the entire synthesis. All right. I'm not describing it anyway. I just want to show you something. Okay. Just want to show you something. Let me just wipe here. Um, so that you just understand. Okay. This is helico. Helico. Yeah. So DNA um, double helix normally unwinds. Remember? To give us a replication fork. Okay. So remember how it occurs. This is a replication fork. Right. So you remember. So, but you see, the strands, all right, of course, um, have a sports basis. Let's assume this is A. Okay. This is C. Right. This is G. Now, just using this for example, this is maybe T, and you know this strand. If that that point is A, this would be T. Okay, T and A are complementary. Uh, this would be G because the other one is C. The other one is C because the other one is G. Okay, A goes T goes with A. All right. Okay. So the question says, of course, this um these two um strands will be used as a template as template all right let me use as template is that okay all right this is three prime to five prime of course in the same direction as the winding process does all right so the, so the, let's look at this that's the first thing that happens and of course the second thing that happens is that free activated nucleotide will be added by dna polymerase you see you know against the complementary base pairing all right so so for this other one the other one a T is going to be here, okay? And then, mm, this is a nucleotide. This is C. It's, it's going to go with G, all right? This along that template strand. G will go with C. Yeah. And then, um, T goes with A, okay? So, they form hydrogen bonds. So, these are nucleotide from hydrogen bonds. So, of course, you know, this is G that goes with a C. They form triple hydrogen bond. This form triple hydrogen bond also. Two hydrogen bond. Okay, T against. So look at it. So don't forget. All right. Of course, once, once that happens, then at DNA polymerase will now form phosphodiester bond, linking them, linking this nucleotide to form. All right, a length of DNA. Okay. All right. So you see the sequence of events. That's what we want to look at now. Look at guys. So look at what's the first one that happens. The free nucleotide and hydrogen bond. Okay, just so first base. Is that the first one? Hydrogen bonds are broken between commuting bases. Well, that's not the first one. Well, look at the first one here. Five. The DNA double helix unwind. That's it. This double, double helix unwinds. Okay, it's unwinding. Mm -hmm. So let's go to option. Which one starts with five? C and D. Yeah. Does A and B eliminated? All right. They're far away. But what we're looking for so when it unwinds how does it unwind okay covalent bond form between no and the cell receives signals no this is this is out of it cell receives the signal to begin to divide this is about cell division we're talking about semi-conservative replication not cell division hydrogen bonds are broken between the complementary bases i think this is correct okay all right because for these to separate you remember that helicase enzyme breaks this hydrogen bond okay yeah it breaks it between this this base and that basis between this the basis of the two template strand so that's five then two and then once it's broken what happens next okay once it's free nucleotides um a hydrogen bond then to that that's what what i showed you here so these are nucleotide the nucleotide they form hydrogen bond with the complementary basis on the spore strand. Okay, that's it. The third thing that happened. So this is where D is out. 
So C continues the journey. So 5, 2, 1, of course, the last one will be 4. Then once they are bonded with their complete basis by hydrogen bond, the next thing is that they are linked together by forming covalent bond, which is phosphodiester bond. So covalent bonds form between hydrogen and nucleotide. All right, same strand, okay, to form. All right, that's what, what happens here. Do you get? So the first thing, DNA unwinds. Second thing, hydrogen bond between the two strands broken. And then third thing, DNA uh, nucleotide hydrogen bonds are formed between the basis on the free nucleotide and uh, that of the template strand. And then covalent bond is formed. So that's five, two, one, four. All right, let's go to the next question. That's C. Um, a length of double stranded DNA contains 120 nucleotides. So, double stranded DNA nucleotide, 120 nucleotides, and codes for polypeptide X. What is the maximum length of polypeptide X? Don't forget, guys, that though DNA has two strands, okay, it's double stranded, but only one strand is the coding strand, is that okay? Only one strand is required. This is double helix. Pardon my drawing. All right. Mm hmm. So only one strand of it is going to be used. All right. So this double strand have 120, 120. You can see that they have 120 nucleotide. So single strand will be what? 120 divided by two because we need only one strand. One strand is the strand that carries genetic information. So one strand will, will give us 60. All right, 60 nucleotides. Remember that we are looking for the maximum length of poly so for how many amino acids that will be in, the, in that polynucleotide? How many amino acids? So we have 60 nucleotides we are dealing with because one strand is the one that codes for that carries the actual genetic information and during transcription we copy only one strand. Okay, so remember that according to genetic code, three nucleotide bases okay gives us one amino acid one aa all right so now 60 nucleotide bases will give us how many amino acid you just cross and multiply okay that will be 60 times one all over three is that okay and you know that cancels that gives us 20. so that means that 60 nucleotide will give us 20 amino acid all right we did not use 120 because only one strand this 120 is for double stranded dna double stranded okay one strand is needed to code for protein you get 60 all right three nucleotide a genetic code three bases gives us one amino acid one 60 will give us what 20 amino aa okay all right so the answer is what 20 amino acid let's go to the next question a peptide consists of 10 amino acids of four different kinds. What is the theoretical meaning of the minimum number of different tRNA molecules required to translate the, the messenger RNA for this peptide? Okay, read this question again. All right, okay, let's go through it quickly. A peptide consists of 10 amino acids. A peptide consists of 10 amino acids of four different kinds of so that means of just four amino acids, all right? But there are ten of them, four types of amino acid. You know, some of them maybe two, some of them maybe five, the other one, maybe three. Okay. So, but there are four amino acids, but four types of amino acids, four different kinds, four different kinds, all right? Um, that make up the ten amino acid. So let's assume if I have um, add an um, add a glutamic acid okay maybe four of it uh, just glutamic acid four uh, valine four and maybe asparagine two making it ten but if you check okay not like that um glutamic acid maybe three valine three asparagine three that okay that's three, three, three different kinds there may be another one phenylalanine two hmm. So now they say, what is the theoretical minimum number of different amino acid molecules required to translate? Don't forget that amino um, transfer RNA, all right, attaches to a specific, right, uh, specific 
amino acid okay at this side this is the the site cca site it attaches here okay it binds to um it attaches to a corresponding amino acid the one that corresponds with this anticodon the anticodon here with a sequence of three bases will determine this amino acid so it binds to so we have one um transfer RNA for one type of amino acid so if you have four different kinds of um amino acid that means you're going to have four different kinds of transfer RNA all right so four different kinds so we have 20 amino acids we have 20 tRNA is that okay yeah because they carry specific amino acid so if you have four different kinds of amino acid we're going to have four different kinds of transfer RNA okay so the answer is a all right number six which statements about tRNA structure are correct good yeah pause the video check the answer pause your video let's see what you've got to do one says there is a binding site for the attachment of specific amino acid that CCA site as well as a different binding site for attachment to ribosome in order to allow transition to occur. Is this number one correct? What do you think, Sir Anma? Remember that transfer RNA has a global leaf shape, like a donut shape, kind of. Pardon my drawing. This is CCA cycle, uh, CCA site. This is a site. This is point of attachment of amino acid. This is where you use it to bind to amino acid, okay? Specific amino acid, and this is um, the anticodon. So this is where it binds to this particular point. Look at this. Um, this is CCA site. This is an amino acid. Specific amino acid attaches to this site. CCA site. This is anticodon. You see this anticodon to bind to the codon of messenger RNA on ribosome during translation. So this is correct. Mm -hmm. Yep, one is correct. Two says there is a ribose phosphate backbone. Okay, ribose because it's made up of ribose, pentose sugar, with strong covalent phosphodiester bond, yes, and areas within the polynucleotide chain where base pairing by hydrogen bonding occurs. Yes, this is correct. Okay, so um, between one, of course, um, one nucleotide to another nucleotide, just I'm tempted to draw this for you. If I have a nucleotide here, this is because this is all right. Um, if I have something like this, okay, on the transfer RNA, okay, watch this. Remember that there's always this part is where phosphate, phosphate group, this is where the base is, pentosugar is in the middle. So between this part and that part, let me draw it very well. Um, just want to show you something. So this is, that's as before they joined, um, this is a nucleotide, there's another nucleotide, there's another nucleotide, they're going to finally join to form, okay, all right, so um, between this and the, this is ribose sugar, this is phosphate, so they're going to form ribose sugar phosphate backbone, this is the base, this is where base attaches, which is complementary to another base, okay, so two is correct. Three says there is a section known as anticodon that contains the same triplet bases as the triplet of DNA bases that has been transcribed to produce the messenger RNA codon. Now, of course, anticodon is similar to triplet bases of DNA because both of them are complementary to codon on mRNA. I explained it in the first video. Okay? Yes. However, they are not the same, okay? Because, um, I mean, tRNA and DNA, they are not the same. The bases are not the same. This has uracil, this has thymine. So, and of course, they have, of course, different ribose um, and pentose sugar. But of course, this DNA doesn't have uracil. It has some thymine. So they are not the same, okay? So, the answer is only one and two that are correct. One and two. Okay, what does the process of transcription require? Yes, what does it require? During transcription, what is needed? ATP is needed to activate or phosphorylate 
free RNA nucleotides, okay? DNA is going to act as template strand of DNA. Okay, free nucleotide, RNA nucleotide will act as building block. Yeah, this makes sense. Now, in transcription, which is synthesis of messenger RNA, transcription is synthesis of, so we're making messenger RNA here. We are constructing messenger RNA. All right, DNA is needed here. No, messenger RNA is not needed to construct messenger RNA. This is wrong. Messenger RNA is not needed. This is wrong. We don't need transfer RNA in transcription. It doesn't occur in ribosome. It occurs in the nucleus. So that is why A is the answer. What is the maximum number of hydrogen bonds in a length of DNA contains 700? Good. Uh, this question can ask you what is the minimum as well. Don't forget that hmm, for DNA, adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with timing. That's completely best, but this is very important. And don't forget that guanine, a purine, is going on G, forms three hydrogen bonds with cytosine. But if it's in RNA, adenine will form the same two hydrogen bonds, but with some other base called uracil. That's for RNA. This is for RNA, RNA, okay? Now, but we're dealing with DNA here. Can you see? Okay. Now, if you check these two, hmm? check this. This is this two forms two two hydrogen bonds. This one three. The maximum number of hydrogen bond formed by bases is three. So seven hundred times three will give you two thousand hundred. If the question says maximum, if it says minimum, the minimum is two. 700 times 2, that gives you 1,400. So in this case, we're dealing with maximum. So this is going to be D. Pause the video, okay? Or listen to it again. Ask us questions. We're waiting to answer your question. All right, number nine says, what type of molecule is always the end product of transcription? Remember, the end product of transcription is mRNA. Transcription is synthesis of messenger RNA during protein synthesis. All right, I've told you the answer. Okay? Yep. So it's very correct. Now, straight to the point. The table gives the RNA anticoder. Okay, yeah, yeah. So pause this video, try this. If you get this, I'll I'll buy you chocolate. Yeah, I'll buy chocolate in a minute. Alright, just let me know. Now they say the table gives the RNA anticodons for four amino acids. This is the amino acid, this is the anticodon. Remember that anticodon determines the amino acid attached to tRNA CCA site. A cell makes a polypeptide with following amino acid sequence. Okay, guys, look at it. This is the first amino acid, this is a, a glutamic acid, this is asparagine, trionine, proline. Then the question goes: what was the sequence of bases on transfer on, on the strand of DNA which was complementary? To the messenger RNA from which this polypeptide was formed. Remember, like I said always, all right, anti coding of transfer RNA is similar to the base tribute of DNA because both of them are complementary to messenger RNA. Don't waste your time, guys. Anytime you are given anti codon and you are asked to convert it to base triplet, just what the only difference is whatever you find, you put T. Simple. All right, whatever you find, you put T. If you are moving from DNA to transfer RNA, whatever you find, T put you. Look at this. This is glutamic acid. Glutamic acid, right? Um, let's go there. See the anticodon. See you, you remove you and put T because DNA doesn't have you as your timing. So let's go. See you, you. So it's going to be CTT. Simple. It's not going to be GA because they are not complementary. It's not going to be CU because DNA doesn't have URC. So, you see, the answer has shown up here. A. Hey, CTT. Okay, let's go on. Asparagine. All right, let's go to asparagine. That's UAA. Remove U and put TTA. After CTT. TTA. TTA. Let's do more one. The next one is trolling. Trolling is what? UGG. Just remove this T and put T. Remove this U and put T. All right, it's going to be TGG. So that's it here. TGG. Last one is proline. Proline is GGA. The same thing. All right, the same thing because what are, they are all found in in, in DNA. So the guanine is in DNA and tRNA. The same thing with adenine. So just put it there. 
So the answer is A. All right. So guys, um, I hope you're learning. I hope you're learning. Okay, it's interesting. I want to thank you for staying there. Okay, please make sure you subscribe. Learn with us. Look, we've got other videos for you and other subjects for you. Sweet, expert, um, tutors. Stay with us, and um, we win together. Thank you for hanging out today. See you next series. Bye. This is Shadrod.